Python is a wonderful language. Other than being simple to use and fast to write, it's also very powerful thanks to its huge ecosystem. In fact, it has so many features that it's easy to miss some good ones. In this video, I'm going to show you three great Python tricks you may have missed. So let's get started. If you ever use Python to do some sort of elaboration, chances are you find yourself writing a for loop iterating through a list of items to process each one of them. But how could you track the status of the process if the code took more than a few seconds to complete? Probably you would start adding some prints. While this is a working solution, a smarter approach would be using TQDM. TQDM is a Python library that makes it easy to show a smart progress bar for almost any kind of loop processing. Let's see an example. The first thing to do is installing the package using pip. Then we can use it in our code by simply wrapping the iterable inside the TQDM call. If you execute this code, you will see a nice progress bar appear in your terminal. As you can see beside the progress, it also shows the speed and the expected remaining time. This library has many more features, so if you haven't already, check out the official documentation. One of the best things about Python is its simplicity. Once you know the basic structures of the language, you can immediately start writing code. While being a great aspect, Sometimes it causes people to miss some neat data structures, such as the default debt. Given a text, you want to group words by their initials. The structure we are looking for here is a dictionary of lists, having the initials as key and a list of words as value, something like this. So you start writing code and you come up with something like this. But then you get the following error. Of course, the first time you see an initial, the associated list is not initialized. Easy to fix, we must first check if the key is present and, if not, initialize the list. And now it's working, but the code became bloated with the check. The full dict is meant to solve that problem. In particular, we can specify the default value of a key that has never been accessed, such as an empty list. The code now becomes. As you can see, we completely removed the check and the code is still working. This is possible because we replaced the dictionary with the default dict, specifying list as the default value, meaning an empty list. A similar problem arises when we want to count the number of occurrences of each word in text. The counter class was specifically made to solve those kinds of problems, adding also a couple of extra goodies to the mix. For example, we want to count the number of occurrences of each word in a text. With the counter class, this is easily accomplished. Actually, we can do even better using the counters constructor. At this point, we can use some neat features such as the most common method that returns the n most common words along with their count. There are many other great tools hidden under the surface and I recommend you to check out the official documentation of the collections package to see many more. So thank you very much for watching, I hope you liked the video, if you did, please consider subscribing to my channel because I will post lots of other projects, ideas, tutorials and uh, I hope to see you next time.